Hello everyone, let's start this session. I think everybody joined, which is great. Let's start this session here. So we are talking, we are gonna talk about here. Uh, we will be finishing anatomy uh, in this uh, session and also we'll start physiology. And let's see how much we can get done with physiology or in, uh, pathology. So let's start. So here we are gonna be talking about femoral region so we we got done with this building restructure uh, and now we are starting the femoral region give me one second okay okay femoral region so in this femoral region, uh, what is the organization of it? We have from lateral to medial, we have a nerve and artery of vein and lymphatics, navel, All right? That's the mnemonic. So we have a nerve, artery, vein, and lymphatics, navel. That's the organization of this thing uh, from lateral to medial. Navel from lateral to medial. Uh, now we have two things here. One thing is the femoral triangle and femoral sheath. Now the triangle uh, that is right here, if you look closely, that's a triangle that contains the the nerve, the artery, and the vein, not the lymphatics, right? Now facial sheath. That is the facial tube, three to four centimeter uh, below inguinal ligament. Contains now it contains the vein, the artery, and lymph nodes, but not the femoral nerve. Okay. So the way you can think about it is, uh, so you have the uh, for femoral sheath, you have an artery and the vein, but not the nerve. Uh, and if you look here, that's the femoral triangle. And uh, these are all the other associated features uh, within this diagram. But moving on, what do we have? Inguinal canal. What is inguinal canal? This is really important. Inguinal canal, first of all, what are the contents in males and the females of inguinal canal? So in males, that inguinal canal contains spermatic cord. And in females, that is the round ligament. Okay, uh, so now in this one, we have two things. One is the deep internal inguinal ring, and one is superficial, also called external inguinal ring. Okay, so uh, before we talk about that, let's talk about these things here. Uh, what does the spermatic cord in males, what does it contain? Or what are the layers of the cord? You have the eyes tie. Uh, you have the external spermatic fascia from E, cremisteric muscle and fascia, internal oblique basically, and internal spermatic fascia, transverse fascia, fascialis, fascia, transversalis, transversalis fascia. So that's the eyes tie. And that's uh, what it contains, the spermatic cord contains. Uh, one more thing here uh, for the deep here is the site. This is important. Deep is the site for protrusion of indirect hernia. And superficial is the site where well, it's going to come through all the way, actually. Yeah. So that indirect hernia is going to go through the full path of spermatic cord and come out. That's on the next page, actually, but uh, just putting uh, a visualization here. And the direct inguinal hernia is going to be coming directly protruding to from the abdom abdomen and the weakness of the abdominal uh, wall coming out of that. Okay, and there is also association between 
these two vessels and which will come back to it which are the inferior epigastric vessels uh so from right to left it, there is an association but it's going to be uh, covered in the next page uh what else in this diagram uh looking at this layers from posterior to anterior or anterior lateral as this said uh what do we have we have the parietal peritoneum we have the extra peritoneal tissue we have the transversalis fascia transfer transfer transversus abdominis muscle internal oblique muscle and epineurosis of the external oblique muscle okay uh yeah pretty much that's what we have uh i mean you can read the whole thing here but uh we will be just talking about the most important things here, which are, which are going to be covered from the next page, and we will come back to this image. Uh, so moving on with the myopectineal RFS. So what is myopectineal RFS? So you have here, if you look at the, so you got two things here, the inguinal Hasselbeck triangle, and you also have the inguinal canal contents. So what are the inguinal canal contents? These are here in the female, you have the neural ligament, as I told you about that. Male, you have the ductus uh, deferens, ilioinguinal nerve, inter internal spermatic vessels. Um, and these are all anterior uh, abdominal wall, location at the anterior, uh, anterior abdominal walls. Okay. And if you you will see some questions here on this thing, so you can come back to this whenever you get a question. Uh, but let's talk about hernias, which is important. Hernia is the protrusion of peritoneum through an opening, usually at the site of weakness, right? So you have a protrusion at the site of weakness uh, that makes an opening, and that hernia, uh, that's called hernia. So contents may be at the risk of, so what are the risks? So if you have that protrusion of your intestine, you, you're at risk of causing incarcination, which means like they're not going to reduce back into the abdomen or the pelvis, and strangulation, which means that it, they can go into ischemia and necrosis. Uh, complicated hernias can present with tenderness. If you have a complication of that hernia, which are these two things, they can present with tenderness, erythema, and fever. Now, we are going to be talking about spagelian hernia, also called spontaneous lateral ventral hernia, or hernia of semilunar line, occurs through the defect between rec excuse me, rectus abdominis and semilunar line in the spagelian epineurosis. Uh, most occurs in the lower abdomen, due to lack of the posterior rectus sheath. Presentation is variable but may include abdominal pain, palpable lymph along the spagelian fascia, and to diagnose it, you have to do ultrasound and CT scan. Now we are going to talk about diaphragmatic hernias. This is high yield now. Diaphragmatic hernias, you have abdominal structures they enter the thorax. So you have the diaphragm, hernia, that means abdominal structures are going into the thorax. Bowel sounds are heard at the chest auscultations. Yes, you will hear them because they're in the thorax. Most common cause in infants and adults, different. In infants, you're looking at congenital defect of pluriperitoneal, pluroperitoneal membrane. While in adults, you're looking at defect of phrenoesophageal membrane. Okay, so uh, in infants, you're looking at congenital defect of the plur pluroperitoneal membranes, which leads to left-sided herniation. Why? Because the right hemidaphragm is relatively protected by the liver. Looking at picture A. Okay, picture A. I mean, uh, I don't have the radiology eye, but uh, <laughs> but you guys can see something, okay? <laughs> what about the adults? 
adults, we have the uh, laxity or defect of the free no esophageal membrane. This leads to hiatal hernia. What is the hiatal hernia? That's the herniation of stomach through esophageal hiatus. Okay. And now hiatal hernia. Uh, you also have the sliding. In hiatal hernia, you have two types. One is the sliding. The second is the paraesophageal hiatal hernias. So uh, for sliding hiatal hernia, looking at this picture, you have gastroesophageal junction is displaced upward. So that's the uh, junction, gastroesophageal junction. Uh, that is a GE junction. That is displaced upward, right? It should have been below diaphragm, but it's upward. Uh, let me erase this thing first. It is displaced upwards, okay? And uh, as the gastrocardia slides into hiatus, so this is the gastrocardia. It's going to give you an R glass. You know, you know that R glass, right? Like you have this, and you have this, something like this, right? So you, it gives you the appearance of R glass stomach. Most common type. This is most common. And it is associated with GERD. While the paraesophageal hernia means you have the GE junction is usually normal. This is your GE junction. This is normal. But you have the fundus that produces into the thorax. So the fundus is, uh, has gone up uh, on the para side, not on the same side, but para on the side of it. Para esophageal, you have the esophagus. Para to that, on the side of that, para esophageal, you have the herniation of the fundus of the stomach. But the most common is this sliding here, sliding hiatal hernia. Uh, what else in this thing? Now you uh, you have to th you have to know one thing, which is uh, in the sliding hiatal hernia, you have the membrane laxity. Where is that? So we said that you have this. Let me erase it so it's more clear. So you have the laxity or defect of the uh, phrenoesophageal membrane, right? But in the sliding, you have the laxity of this. Uh, of this uh, free noesophageal membrane. And in the paraesophageal, you have a membrane defect. Basically, you have a defect of the esophageal membrane, uh, free noesophageal membrane. The question is, what is this esophageal membrane? Right? That's a good question that one can say, hey, what is this uh, free noesophageal membrane? So it is a, uh, uh, it is a, uh, that basically connects, it is connected to the diaphragm on each side, which is then connected to the esophagus. Excuse me. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, free noise of angel <coughs> membrane. Uh, uh, okay, one more thing is the GERD, which is important. The GERD causes the, which is associated with the sliding hiatal hernias. All right, then move on with the next thing. What do we have? <coughs> Indirect inguinal hernias and the direct inguinal hernia. So in indirect, look at this picture here. Very good picture. Indirect is gonna follow all the layers. It's gonna come from that deep inguinal ring to us and it's gonna come out of the superficial inguinal ring. Let's read. Uh, it goes through the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring. So it comes from like deep, gets out 
like a normal pathway it follows the normal pathway and that's indirect well if you look at the wording direct direct means hey he doesn't he doesn't care what normal pathway is he's like man i'm gonna just go wherever straight wherever, wherever i'm arising from so it's gonna go straight produced through inguinal Hasselbach triangle bulges directly look by those directly through the parietal peritoneum now medial now one thing medial to the uh, inferior epigastric vessels well that will be lateral to inferior epigastric vessels that in indirect it is caused by failure of processes vaginalis to close uh, can form hydrocele may be noticed in infants or discovered in adults most common in males follows the pathway of the testicular descent right covered by all three layers of spermatic fascia that I style remember uh, direct inguinal hernia well we talked about it bulges directly it's a medial to inferior epigastric vessels and it is the lateral to the rectus abdominis so if they're saying hey if it is uh, <coughs> if it is medial to the inferior epigastric vessels let's say these are two inferior epigastric vessels uh, and this is the hernia saying w what is it lateral to just to you know anatomically touch where it is well it is lateral to the rectus abdominis muscle and it comes straight uh, directly through the parietal retonium straight out goes through the external right external superficial inguinal ring so it although it comes directly but it, it does uh, get into the path of this superficial inguinal ring and gets out of air from that openings uh, but that's the only thing it, it it goes through not two not two rings only one ring it cover it is covered by external spermatic fascia usually occurs in the older males due to acquired weakness in the transversalis fascia so the question is how come you directly protrude from the parietal peritoneum outside because if you have a weak muscles weak transversalis fascia or your old person or you know you haven't done any uh, what is called the crunches but it's not it's seen only in the old males because it's weak the muscles are weak so in older males that's the uh, weakness of the transversalis fascia so it really protrudes out and goes through the superficial inguinal ring MDs don't lie well I don't know about that well medial to inferior epigastric vessels is direct that's the mnemonic MD medial to the inferior epigastric vessel direct lie lateral to the inferior epigastric vessel indirect well just know direct comes straight on one thing indirect follows the whole path well this is more like medial and lateral MDs don't lie does help you out uh, knowing the difference okay so let's talk about femoral hernia now okay femoral hernia femoral female the other one was uh, male and old male now we're talking about female it produced below uh, inguinal ligament below the inguinal ligament so below this thing inguinal ligament and through the femoral canal below and lateral to pubic tubercle you have the pubic tubercle here below that and lateral to it yeah not much of a rocket science uh, more common in females femoral female but overall inguinal hernias are more common are most common inguinal hernias are most common most likely to be present with incarcination yeah i mean this is so, such a tight space so guess what if once you are inside here it's, it's hard to go back or strangulation yeah i mean you, you can get a strangulation there versus inguinal hernias versus inguinal hernias okay that makes sense let's move on with uh the, well this is going to be it for physiology i mean for anatomy now we will be going for the next section is going to be for physiology